you go and say, hey, somebody left their window rolled down. Now, if the car gets wet on the inside, well, I'm sorry, but I told somebody. You should have done something about it. But seeing something like this or being told something like this is not something you just flippantly go off and say, well, you know, I told somebody. And I find it very interesting that when all of this comes down, when all this starts happening, when it starts being exposed, this man goes, well, you know what? I'm going to retire at the end of this year. I'll just go ahead and accept my reg- go and turn my resignation in. I'm going to retire at the end of this year anyway. So the school don't need to worry about me. They don't need to worry about me because I'm going to retire anyway. Oh, yeah? That must have been telling, that must have uh, uh, told, that told me that you knew what was going on. And then you say, well, you know, I don't know if he knew what was going on or not. Well, he put all of his financial business, all of his house and everything in his wife's name. See, I think people realize, you know what, a lawsuit's coming down. If, if legal uh, or, or if criminal action doesn't take place, then civil action is going to take place. I want to secure myself. Now, friends, what I'm saying is this. It ought to appall you. And yet people are going, oh, let's, you know, let's, let, let, let's don't be rushed to judgment. Well, friends, there's not much you can say about it if you know something's going on in your house and you don't do anything about it. Now, that's what we're talking about. People sweeping things under the rug and saying, well, it's no big deal. Well, and that's not the only thing. That's not the only thing. What about this? Here's another one. This man's name is Bernie Fine. Bernie Fine is accused, he's a coach at Syracuse, he's accused of the same thing, of molesting young boys. And people say, well, you know, that's terrible. And then people stick, keep coming up. Yeah, that happened to me too, that happened to me too. And yet, so what are we doing about it? It ought to just appall us. It ought to turn our stomachs. And then you see all the marital infidelity that's going on in the past year. Here's Herman Cain, recently got out of the presidential uh, race because uh, 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 reports of uh, infidelity comes out. And I guess there must be some truth to it. He's, he, he's not in the race anymore. But then again, that doesn't mean anything because here's a man who was running for vice president, uh, our, our very own John Edwards, you know, who had a mistress and a child by her, a three-year-old child by, by the mistress. And this was all while his wife uh, had cancer, dying of cancer. I heard somebody say that Herman Cain should have just waited and maybe his wife got cancer and everybody had forgiven it. No, see, friends, what we're dealing with, we're talking about people who are saying, well, all this doesn't really matter. It does matter. It does matter. And it's just a, an indication of what's going on in our society. You want some more? You want some more? Let's just, let's just put it out here. Here is uh, uh, Solyndra. Now, this is a company, Solyndra, that is known for its green energy or, or contributing to the so-called green movement. And this company received $535 million in federal loan guarantees. The president went and signed off on it and gave his blessing to them. But it was known at this time when they received a $535 million loan, your, your bailout money, the stimulus that all of our congressmen signed off on, they got $535 million of that knowing that they were going bankrupt. Their books show that they were going to be bankrupt by September of this year. And guess what? September this year, they're bankrupt even though they got the $535 million. Now, friends, I don't know about you, but I said there's a lot of companies that could have been uh, easily gotten out of bankruptcy with $535 million, but this company couldn't. And I'm just saying, friends, why do you think that happens? Why do you think people say, well, let's, let's take all this stimulus money and let's just give it away to all our cronies? That's corruption. There's got to be some corruption going on. But yet people go, well, let's just sweep it under the rug. You want another uh, uh, example? Example? Uh, <clears throat> this is Freddie, uh, Freddie Mac and Fannie Mae. They received loans, your, that, uh, that stimulus money. Uh, they received $150 billion, $150 billion in, the, in, the, in the bailout. And uh, this was... This was uh, 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 not even, this didn't help them, all right? They're still, they're still in trouble. But on top of this, in 2009 and 2010, six executives for uh, Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac, six CEOs, were given $35.4 million, with two of them receiving about half of that. 
Each of these executives take home about $6 million a piece in salary and bonuses this year in spite of the companies going in the tank. All right, they're going bankrupt, they're going belly up, they get this loan, they get this surplus, and what happens? Well, we make sure we get our salaries, we get our bonuses. Now, I'm not trying to make this political, I'm not trying to make this uh, anything other than to help you realize this is what's going on in our country in the name of, you know, which is a way of doing business. But it's all corruption, it's all scandals, and people are making out like, well, it's just the thing we always do. But friends, this hits closer to home. You may say, well, that's, you know, that's, that's uh, in New York or that's in California. That's way away from Washington, D.C. That's way away from here. Well, let's bring it a little closer to home. Here are just some headlines in the news recently from a couple days ago. Reedsville man charged with indecent liberties with a minor. No, see, friends, it's not just up in, in, in Washington. It's not in the... School. It's not in Penn State. It's not in Syracuse. It's right here. It's right here. You go to the. You can go down to the courthouse or the sheriff's department, and you know what you see? You see a big old map on the wall, and it's got little red dots all over it in Rockingham County. You know what it is? Sex offenders. Why do you? Why do you think that we have so many sex offenders? Why do you think that we have so many people who are having charges brought upon them with things like this? Or what about this? Charges brought in the 2003 homicide. This is from Danville. Or accessory charges lodged in a 2005 murder for a man in Caswell County. This is all going on all over our region, all over right here in our backyards. Why do you think that, why, what do you think the problem is? Well, friends, one of the problems is people are getting away from the standard. But I submit to you one of the reasons why it's inc spreading increasingly is because of what's being taught from our pulpits in the name of giving people the Bible. But in reality, what they're actually doing is they're actually encouraging it. Actually encouraging it. You know, if you don't say something against an act, if you don't oppose an act, then you basically encourage it. And that is what I submit to you is cause for the contribution. The culture of corruption is being promoted by Calvin's contribution. Now let me tell you who Calvin is. Calvin's not some guy down at the grocery store. Calvin, not your national network. Calvin is John Calvin. John Calvin was a, uh, uh, we'll say a, an ancient old-timey theologian. And here's what I'm trying to do in simple terms. But he was a teacher. He was a philosopher, religious leader. And this is what he uh, uh, taught. Now he wasn't the first person to think of this, but he was the one that now bears his name because he was such a large proponent of it. He taught it so much. He pushed it. Calvinism is characterized by five different uh, uh, teachings. Let's go over them. Number one is total depravity. Now you recognize this. Many of you probably believe this. I know you do because you call on. We have discussions about this. Guys like Dan Parker have come on and they've had debates over this about a born in sin, original sin, inherited sin. All right? That's total depravity. That's total depravity. That's a tenet of Calvinism. All right? The second one is unconditional election. That doctrine says, now these are not in the Bible, mind you, but that doctrine says that God has selected individuals who will be saved and there's, you know, there's nothing you can do about it. He's, he's just selected you to be saved. Unconditional election. He's, he's determined that, all right? Now, limited atonement. Limited atonement is the, the L in TULIP. And limited atonement means that God has provided atonement, forgiveness of sins, for those few people that he has unconditionally elected. All right? Now, the next tenet is irresistible grace. And that simply means that since God has unconditionally elected you and has provided atonement for you, there's nothing you can do to change that. Either you're going to be saved or you're going to be lost. There's nothing you can do. If God wants to save you, he's going to save you. And that's all, that's all there is to it. Now, that's what Calvinism teaches. And the last tenet is perseverance of the saints. Or, as we normally know it, once saved, always saved. Now, friends, you may not believe all these tenets. You may not even know that you believe any of these tenets. 
But one thing about it is your preacher preaches at least some of them, if not all of them. Now, here's my point. My point, it may be the case that everybody doesn't believe all of these. But most of these, at least some of these, are taught and believed by most of the churches of men. Presbyterians, in their, in the, in the, in their confessional faith, it's in there. Baptist doctrine, it's in there. You can get your creed books and your catechisms and you'll find some, if not all, these tenets. Catholics, born in sin. Now, everybody believes born in sin. None of them born in sin. See? Uh, do what? So, Central Boulevard, all right. So, what we're talking about is people believe this. Now, I submit to you the doctrine of once saved, always saved only contributes to the culture of corruption. Now, now, now think with me. He said, well, James, how can once saved, always saved? Seems pretty harmless. How can it contribute to the idea that, well, I can cheat on my wife, or I can embezzle money from the government, or I can steal, or I can murder? How does that, how does that contribute to it? Well, here's the thing. The culture of corruption is continued, it's pushed on by Calvin's contribution. Calvin, John Calvin, the Calvinist doctor, made a contribution that actually continues the culture of corruption. i say that ten times real fast. But here's what we're dealing with. We're dealing with a doctrine for all practical purposes, friends, really does not have any limitations to it. It doesn't have any hindrances, no restraints for people. And that's what we're dealing with. Now, here is what I want you to consider. Uh, a few nights ago, a few weeks ago, uh, one of the brethren and I, we went to visit the Bethel Baptist Church in Eden. And the man's name is Daryl Bowles. And the reason why I went to talk to Mr. Bowles is because we talked to one of his members. And one of his members was telling us, well, yeah, yeah, once saved, always saved. And if you keep sinning, God will just take you. He'll just, he'll just put you in an early grave and he'll take you on to heaven. And I said, where is that in the Bible? Well, he couldn't find it. So I said, well, I'm going to ask your preacher. So we went and asked the preacher. Now, what I want you to do is I want you to listen. I want you to listen to some of the uh, conversation that we had with um, Mr. Bowles and uh, listen to some of his, um, I guess you might say, some of his uh, uh, explanations regarding uh, eternal salvation. Once saved, always saved. Now, there's no, no really video for you to see, so you're just going to listen to it. But um, let me see if I can come up here. All right. Uh, we had a question about eternal salvation. Well, man, him, well, man, him did talk now. Okay. Yeah, we did talk. Okay. Yeah. Uh, uh, you mean what? Uh, not really. We was saying, we everything. Well, um, we was we had a question about uh, of course we were dealing with you know salvation. What did we say? And and, uh, and I think maybe eternal salvation. Mm -hmm. You know. You know So we're talking about eternal salvation. Now, I apologize because I'm talking quietly. I'm not, I'm not trying to raise my voice. I don't want to be boisterous. I don't want to be accused of being, you know, riotous or anything like that. Their, their services had not started yet. But we're there in the auditorium, and I don't want to, you know, I don't want to draw attention. I'm just talking quietly to the preacher. So you can, you can hear him very well, but I may have to uh, tell you my questions again. But nonetheless, we're talking about once saved, all, or, or once saved, always saved. And uh, this is this is what uh, what we're getting to now. Let me skip on down here. All right, just bear with me right here. So you believe you can lose your salvation? Yeah. yeah. But, what, but what do you say though when Jesus says, "Me and my Father give me, I'm not lost." Him. Well, he can lose you. Yeah. Well, you can lose. But if he's got you, how, how, but, how, but you can lose. But your salvation's not in your hands. But if you, you don't believe you have a choice, you don't believe you can turn around. And I believe you can die and backslide. And then what happens? Well, what state all this? All right, now. I believe you can backslide, he says. And I said, but then what happened? Well, once saved, always saved. So backsliding does not mean you lose your salvation. It just means that maybe you just don't do what you should be doing, but you're still all right. 
Now, friends, does that tell you something? Does that, does that give you an idea of what we're dealing with? We're talking about people who are saying, well, you, you can't lose your salvation. Now, you, you might, you know, lose the joy of your salvation. Well, let me tell you what. The Bible says that the pleasures of that sin has pleasure to it. So, you want to talk about losing the joy of your salvation. So, you might lose the joy of your salvation, but you can still participate in the pleasures of sin. And still make it to heaven. Now, this is the problem that we're having. And see, this opens the floodgates. Hey, hey, if I can still make it to heaven, I can still see and make it to heaven, I'm all right. All right? Now, listen to him some more. Now, here's what I just asked him. I said, if a man fornicates, he goes in, fornicates with a woman, Walks out of the house and dies. Is he going to go to hell? All right. Doesn't have. Doesn't repent. Where is he going? Is he going to heaven or is he going to hell? Here is his. Here's his answer. If he's saved, yes. And he just reformed it. Yes, sir. Now the Bible says a fornicator will not be in heaven. Right. I know what you mean. So a fornicator can't be in heaven. You just said a fornicator will not be in heaven. But once he's saved, he's saved for eternity. Now, well, yeah, but once he's saved, he's saved for eternity. So he's fornicating in there, that's right, but he's still saved. Now, friends, what's wrong with that picture? Does that, not, does that not cause you some problems? To hear your preacher telling you, yes, you can fornicate and still go to heaven. It, it may not bother you at all. It may make you happy. But that's what he's saying. He's saying you can fornicate and still go to heaven. Well, the Bible clearly says that that's not the case. All right? Notice this. In Galatians, go over to my Bible program. I want you to keep the Bible in front of you on this. Galatians chapter 5 and verse 19. Here's what Paul says. He goes, Now the works of the flesh are manifest, which are these. Adultery, fornication. Now, what about these things, Paul? What about these things like adultery and fornication? Look what Paul says in verse 21. He says, As I have also told you in the past, that they which do such things shall not inherit the kingdom of God. Darrell Bowles says you can. The Bethel Baptist. A uh, church preacher says you can inherit the kingdom of God. You can fornicate and still inherit the kingdom of God. Paul says you can. I'll take Paul. Now the Baptist preacher is going to tell you, well, you can because once saved, always saved. Well, by all means, if the Bible contradicts your doctrine, hold to the doctrine. I mean, God forbid that we give up a man-made doctrine in order to accept the truth. All right? So, so Darrell Bowl says, yeah. Yeah, you, you, you'll still be saved because after all, once saved, always saved. Listen to some more of it. But I'm saying he, he don't change that. But I'm saying he's he, 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 well, he, he, yeah, he, but he still, I mean, he died on the same thing. Yeah, even though he's sinned, yeah, he fornicated, you know, call it by name, that's true. Yeah. I mean, but still, he died a saved man. All right, yeah. Well, yeah, let's go ahead and call it what it is. He, he didn't really want to call it fornication. Now, why not, friends? You know why? Because when you say fornication, everybody knows fornication is not going to heaven. But he still died a saved man. Now, say that again, Daryl. Say that again. Uh, a man died a fornicator and still died a saved man? They were not in heaven. Right. I know what you mean, but he died a saved man. Fornicated. Yeah, even though he sinned, yeah, he fornicated. You know, call it by name. That's true. Yeah. I mean, but still, he died a saved man. Yeah, he died, a, he died a saved man. I said, no, he died a fornicator. Well, yeah, he died a fornicator. Let's call it what it is. But he still died a saved man. Now, friends, can you see why no one would care if Bill Clinton is having sex as a president or if uh, John Edwards has an illegitimate child or if Jesse Jackson has an illegitimate child or if Herman Cain has an affair? Or if uh, Newt Gingrich has been married a thousand times? What, 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 so what? So what? The preachers that were saying, still die a saved man. 
The Catholic Church will over absolve you of your sins and you can go on about your merry way. You see what we're dealing with? When religion drops the restraints and doesn't teach God's principles, anything goes. Anything goes. And that's what and that's what Daryl Bowles is saying. All right, now let me see if I can come down here to the next little bit here. Uh I believe people who are obedient go to heaven. Okay. He asked yeah. me who's going to go to heaven, and I said people who are obedient. And me was saying, Lord, Lord, but a child has to go to heaven. Right. Because right. he was the will of the Father. Right. If someone's fornicating, he's not doing the will of the Father. Mm-hmm. He said he's going to go to heaven. I'm saying he's not. Right. Right. Because you don't believe what's saved, all what's saved. Yeah, the Bible doesn't teach that. Yeah. Every well, book, that's true interpretation. Every, 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 every book in the Bible, every book in the Bible, except Philemon, mm-hmm. says, "Beware or watch out lest you fall." Mm-hmm. Every book in the Bible. Now, for what? If it was impossible to fall. Well, you know what I mean. I mean, you know, why, why spend the time right? All I can say is, you know, that's you know. I've been... Now, now listen, listen. What he says here. He's 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 listening to the arguments. He's listening to what I'm saying. He knows. That he's going to have trouble about a fornicator being in heaven. Listen to what he says. In college, I've been taught, that's the way I've been taught, the way I've been taught to believe, the way I've been taught to believe all my life. Okay. That's the way we believe in the church. Okay. You know, what's saved, always saved. And I don't know what if it was in the Well, you know what I'm saying? I mean, you know, listen carefully. All I can say is, you know, that's, you know, I've been college. He's been to college. I've been taught. He's been taught. That's the way I've been taught. The way I've been taught. This is the way he's been taught all his life. To believe the way I've been taught to believe all my life. Okay. That's the way we believe in the church. That's the way they believe in the Bethel Baptist Church and most other Baptist churches. Okay. You know, once saved, always saved. Once saved, always saved. And I, you got a valid point, valid argument that, I like to say, if a man goes out here and kills somebody, yeah. and then turns around and dies. He's a murderer. Yeah. So is he going to go to heaven? Yeah. He didn't say he is. Yeah, because he's saved. Yeah. Yeah, so so not not only are you a fornicator and get to heaven, now you can actually go murder somebody and get to heaven. Now, would somebody please call Mr. Daryl Bowles and tell him that a fornicator and a murderer are not going to be able to get to heaven? I mean, that's what Paul is is saying here. Look, do we need to back it up again? Notice this. All right, uh, uh, the works of flesh. Adultery, fornicating, uncleanness, lasciviousness, idolatry, witchcraft, hatred, variance, envyings, murderers. Two things that Paul said are not going to uh, uh, let you in heaven. Two things that are going to keep you from inheriting the kingdom of heaven. Daryl Bowles of the Bethel Baptist Church in Eden, North Carolina, over there on Cedar Street, says that you can commit murder and fornication and still get to heaven. Boy, that is a, if that's not a blank check to sin, what is? So you said once he commits murder, he's lost his salvation. Well, see, here's the thing, though. Here's thing get well, let me say like this, so for right quick. Uh, fornication of telling the white lie is all sin. You telling me you don't know the sin? Yeah. All right, so you lose your salvation all the time? I said, I asked for forgiveness. Well, I didn't too. But I'm saying, you, but you're saying, I'm saying, I'm I know, but you're saying, he never asked. Did they repent? Yeah. 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 He's got, well, see, that's where you lose your reward when you stand before the Lord. Yeah. And yeah. Now, where's the Bible that says you lose your reward? You make it to heaven, but you lose your reward. Now, did you hear what he asked me? He said, you mean to tell me that you can, if you, but if you tell a white lie, you lose your, you lose your salvation because uh, that's the same as fornication. Now, friends, is, is telling a lie the same as fornication? Is, is really telling a lie the same as fornication? Let's get right down to it. Telling a lie the same as fornication. I tell you what, you go home and tell your wife, you know, I, I, I told you a lie the other day, I, 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 I didn't get the oil changed in the car. I told you I did, but I really didn't. You tell her that. Now, she may get upset at you. You tell her a lie. Yeah, yeah, I'm going to, you know... I'm going to go down and pay the water bill. And you didn't do it. Uh, she may get mad at you. You come home and tell her, honey, I cheated on you. I fornicated on you. <laughs> you know, you wish you'd had me paying the water bill. That's what we're talking about. See the difference? So sin is not sin. Now, granted, any sin that's unforgiven will send you to hell. But he said an unintentional lie. 
An unintentional lie. Friends, if it's unintentional, it's not a lie. That's the one problem. But then he says something you don't know. He said you did something that you didn't know about, and he wanted to come out to fornication and murder. Ever. Yeah. Yeah. So, so, so you, when you tell us you're not going to worry about fornicating because you're all right, you, you're not preaching that. I'm probably preaching against fornication. Mean, now, he said he preached against fornication. I'd like to hear him preach a lesson on fornication. And then I'd like for one of his members to stand up and say, yeah, but once saved, always saved. And Preacher Bowl said, and I've got it right here on tape, that you can go out and fornicate and you still be all right. Preacher Bowl tells you, don't fornicate. But over here on the other side of his mouth, he says, but if you do, hey, it's all right. Come on, people. Come on. That's, that's, that's sickening. Because you're not supposed to, but everybody falls short. Everybody falls short. Let me tell you something, friend. Breaking the speed limit, you know, you're going down here and you break the speed limit, that's falling short. I don't think, I don't think that's going to be equated with fornicating. See, he says, well, if you do it unintentionally, you're still sin. And then over here, but you can intentionally commit murder and fornication and you'd be all right. You unintentionally sin, you unintentionally do something you shouldn't do, and that's the same as intentionally doing something that you know you shouldn't do. You know, the Bible talks about willful sin. See, friends, this is what we're dealing with. We're dealing with, we're dealing with a society that's been hearing all these things all this time, and now what do you do with them? See, how, how do you, how do you uh, harmonize what the Bible says and what the preacher's been saying. All right, let's go and take some phone calls. Your own word from the Lord. Um, that's like uh, what the... Oh, hang on a second. That's like what the um, Jehovah's Witnesses, they believe, because I've met and know quite a few of them, uh, that you can die as a sinner and be resurrected and still be, have another chance. Well, well, here's the thing. Jehovah's Witnesses say there is no hell. The Baptists say you can't get there. So what's the difference? But that's true, too. They say that, too, yeah. yeah. No hell. Job's going to say no hell. Baptists say you can't get there. I've seen their Bibles, and it says in there, uh, when it talks about hell, it says figurative. Yeah, yeah. I also wanted to tell you that uh, you ought to put up uh, Romans uh, chapter 1. Well, I mean, it starts at 24, it goes all the way down, talks about the sin. Then it says at the end, in uh, verse 32, to uh, knowing the judgment of God, that they which commit such things are worthy of death. Right. Not only do the same, but have pleasure in them that do them. Well, they'll just say, well, it's worthy of death, but God, you know, God's grace reaches everybody, so let's just, you know, let's just live it up and have a good time. I mean, that, that would be their attitude about it. It'd have to be if they believe once saved, always saved. Yeah. But you, you made a good point there. I, I'm kind of like I, Mark. I used to be in the Baptist church when to come up in it, and then I finally started putting one plus one and getting two. You know, what I was reading and what I was hearing from them just didn't match up, and I right. finally come to the truth. All right. Well, I'm glad, you, I'm glad you've heard the truth. All right, I got another call. I'm going to take it. Thanks for your call. Good Yes, sir. You want to work from the Lord? Yes. You're on the air. Uh, yes, hi. Um, I was just talking to uh, my friend Tammy about the same situation uh, last night. She had told me that uh, she believed once saved, always saved. I am a Pentecostal from belief. Okay. I believe that. Um. We, we believe in getting filled with the Holy Ghost and, you know, letting God, you know, whatever, repenting of the sins and, and you know, the whole scenario. But I also wanted to talk to you about um, what you were talking about as far as, uh, you know, revealing this pastor and the situation with this pastor. Because it also talks in the Bible about judging, and that's a sin, too. So, it, so... Is what I'm doing wrong? I'm, I, I'm just saying, like, I know, like, what you're saying, like, pinpointing the situation out and what he's, basically what he's saying. 
saying is not accurate. And I understand that because I don't I don't agree with what he's saying either. But help him, not judge him. Okay. Well, here's the thing. Let, I didn't play this part, but I asked him if he would sit down and have a Bible study with me, and he said no. Oh, did he? Yeah. You want to play that? Let me let me back and play that. Okay. Uh, let me see here. Let me look, see one more. Uh, let's see. But that was it is actually at the beginning of the conversation, pretty close to the beginning of the conversation. Mm -hmm. I asked him that. Here we go. What's he offended? Here we go. Uh, but I'm saying though, I've been, I've been, I've been twice to see him. Yeah. You know, and I'm not trying to put him on the spot. Yeah. But I'm saying, you know, let's, well, we, let's, yeah. let's find somebody that can get an answer. Yeah. You know? Well, we'll, we'll work on that. that. I'll talk to him. We'll work on so, that. But you think, would you be willing to do that? Like, no. Just me and him. All right. I said, would you be willing to sit down with your member and me and and you give the answers to me that I ask of your member. In other words, I ask his member some questions and he couldn't give me the answer. So I want his member to see that he couldn't find the answers either. So I said, would you sit down? You know, I want this all to sit down. And he said, no, I'll sit down with my member, but not with you. But how does that help us? Maybe he, he, uh, he probably wrong, was offended probably us? about the situation or whatever, you know. And, and, and... You know, it's a touchy situation. Well, well let me let me say, but put this out here, though. You said, you talk about the Bible talks about judging. Well, look at this. John 7, 24 says, judge not according to appearance, but judge righteous judgment. So I, I know what righteous judgment is. Righteous judgment is a judgment based upon the righteous word of God or the word of righteousness. So if I look at the word of righteousness and I say, this is what the Bible says, and once saved, always saved is not in the word of righteousness, then have I made righteous judgment? Well, it also says in the Bible that God is the one that's supposed to judge us. I, I know, but John twelve forty eight says we're going to be judged by his word. So all I'm doing is I'm putting the word out here, and I'm saying what you're teaching doesn't line up with the word. So I'm really not judging him. I'm judging his doctrine. I may be judging his fruit or his practice, and but I'm not judging. I'm not judging him in the sense of I'm because that is good what you're doing because um, he is he has uh, people that are following behind him. That's right, and he should not be teaching uh, the word of you know not accurate word of God, and and I you know that is right. I think to do that, but what I what I am going to say is. Be, be leery about how you go about doing it, though. You know, that's what I'm talking about. Like, well, but but but, uh, how, but what was I doing wrong? I mean, I would, you you can barely hear me talking. I'm talking so low key. See, I, I'm talking so low key. You can barely hear me. So, I'm, and I'm trying to do that very thing. I mean, I appreciate what you're saying because I'm. We get accused all the time of going in, disrupting, and causing trouble, whatever. And I'm I'm doing my very best. To make sure that does not happen. Yeah. I don't think anybody hears that knows. I'm not in there yelling and screaming and shouting and ranting and raving and jumping to pews. You know, I'm not doing that. I'm being very calm, very courteous, you know. And, uh, uh, you know, when, when we walked in, the people, we, we talked to some folks. There people out there that just want to get a paycheck, you know, and they're not, they don't even know the Bible. Right. And, and I appreciate what you're doing, you know, as far as pinpointing, you know, and people need to learn the Bible, mm -hmm. you know, and not just take a scripture and, you know, turn it backwards, you know, right. or, or or turn it to where they, you know, their interpretation of it. It right. needs to be accurate information, you know. Right. But, but I, I, I agree with you, you know, on that note. It's just that, you know, uh, don't badger, you know, that's what I well, think. Well, you know, here's what I think it is. And you tell me if you think this is a good uh, assessment. Do you think it's the case that our society has not seen Bible discussions like they used to have? They used to have Bible discussions all the time. Debate, they call them debates. That, that's kind of a dirty word now. You know, people don't like to have debates. But they, we used to have that all the time. 
I mean, all the, the churches, all the denominations used to have debates amongst themselves about what the Bible really taught. Do you think that because people don't see that anymore, that they have determined that anytime you have a Bible discussion or Bible study with somebody, that's a bad thing? Do you think that's, do you think that's why they have the reservations maybe like you're having? And, 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 and I, I really do believe it. And plus, the older people, I believe, too, in a way, I'm from San Antonio, Texas. And Is that where you're calling from? No, I'm calling okay. from uh, Madison, North Carolina. We moved okay. up here like four years ago. Okay. And the church up here that I'm going to, Empowerment Christian Center, our pastor is from uh, Houston, Texas. And, you know, I, I, before I joined there, we was, uh, you know, trying to look at some churches or whatever. I was, I was like disappointed until we met with our pastor that I have now because, I mean, the teaching. It's so differently. You know, Every the churches that we were going to was different, and they didn't have stuff for the kids to do. And right. It's just like totally different, like you were saying. But I wanted to ask you something. How do you feel about homosexuality? How do you teach on that? Well, the Bible teaches that homosexuality is a sin. It would fall in the category of fornication. Oh. The, okay, go ahead. The Bible teaches that it's a sin. It would, it would fall under the category of, for, of fornication. But look at this. In 1 Corinthians, let's just put this up here. 1 Corinthians 6 and verse 9. <clears throat> Whoops, sorry about that. First, that little typo there. 6 and verse 9. Mm-hmm. Paul says, Know ye not that the unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God, be not deceived, neither fornication, neither fornicators, sorry about that, neither fornicators, nor idolaters, nor adulterers, nor effeminate, nor abusers of themselves with mankind. Now, if you if you look up these words, effeminate and abusers of themselves with mankind. Okay. One, one means like the boy lover, the effeminate, and the other is the sodomite. So the two, really the... Uh, you know, two classes of homosexual here. Paul says they will not inherit the kingdom of God. But look at this. In verse 11, uh, I said, shall not inherit the kingdom of God. But verse 11, he says, and such were some of you. So in the Corinthian church, there were some former homosexuals. Yeah. And yet Paul says, you know, they were that way. So you can't stay that way. But if you do, you won't inherit the kingdom of God. Mm-hmm. But, but you can change. That, have you noticed that some of the churches now are accepting this? Yes. And, and, but let me ask you this. But why not? See, this is why I'm saying This is my whole point of my lesson. And why not accept it? They teach once saved, always saved. So even if it's a sin, go ahead and accept them because they're going to go to heaven. That's what they teach. Yeah. See, it makes sense for them to accept it. Actually, the, the Baptist church ought to accept it because they're the ones who are saying, once saved, always saved. Yeah. Now, I, you know, I, I, I've heard, I've heard that the senior pastor over at the Osborne Baptist Church in, in, uh, uh, in Eden, thank you, the, the, the pastor there now is named Steve Griffith. His dad was asked that question, what would you do if a homosexual came in? And he and he said, you know, I wouldn't. I'm not going to talk to him about it. If they kept pressing, he's not going to do anything about it. Well, he shouldn't even have to worry about talking to him about it because once saved, always saved. If you can, if you can fornicate, if you can cheat on your wife and still be saved, well, you can have a, be a homosexual and still be saved too, according to Baptist doctrine, according to Calvinist doctrine. And that's why I'm saying. This once saved, always saved is really opening the floodgates for all kinds of immorality to come in. And and it's basically, you know, in which God is, God loves everyone. And and I think that's where they're getting, they're going, you know, uh, they teach God is of love, which he is. And God loves everyone, but God is not going to accept, you know, all this chaos, you know, that is going on right. within you know, uh, the earth, you know, 
that's why he set up boundaries and right. and, and stuff, you know, according well, to, you know, his laws. Okay. Well, let me ask you. This. Let me let me just throw this out here, and then I'm on, I'm gonna move on because I'm running up against time. But okay. you know, you said you're in the Pentecostal church. I would say, I would ask you to consider this. Can you find the Pentecostal church in the Bible? Because if you can't, then really what you're doing is you're doing the same thing that you said other people shouldn't do. You're actually going beyond God's bounds. You're worshiping God in a way that he didn't say. And I'm just saying I want you to consider that. Okay, and if you want with the Holy Ghost, you're saying that that's not... No, I'm talking about, I'm talking about the Pentecostal church. Okay. And I'm saying if you want to if you want to sit down with get your pastor, uh, I sure do. I if sure you want to do. sit down with his your pastor and me, I'll be glad to do that. Okay. You see that? that and that's what I offered to uh, Mr. Daryl Bowles. I offered I offered to sit down with him and one of his members, and he said, "No, I'm going to counsel my members myself." Well. You know what? He could he couldn't answer the Bible. I wouldn't want I wouldn't want to sit down if I was him. I wouldn't want to sit down with one of my members with a member of the church either, and let them see how much Bible I didn't know. Because I mean, that's just what I'm saying. But uh, I'll be glad to sit down with your preacher. Do you believe in being filled with the Holy Ghost and not not like not like was in the in the New Testament times? I believe that miracles. The, the filling of the Holy Ghost was miraculous and it was for a certain purpose and for a certain time period and it's not available today. But I believe in the Bible they were because they were trying to demonstrate that what they were saying was from God. They didn't have the New Testament written down yet so they needed some way to confirm the word. But see, that's a good subject. That's what we could sit down and talk about. What's your, what's your preacher's name? Would, would he be willing to do it? Pastor Prayler. Mike Prayler. Mike Prayler? Mm-hmm. P-R-A-L... P-R-A-Y-L-O-R. Okay. Prayler. All right. All right. And he's in Madison? No, he's in Greensboro. Okay. What what church in Greensboro? Empowerment Christian Center. Empowerment Christian. Okay. Well, uh, my you know number's going to come Otis up... Pastor Lockett? I'm sorry? Pa- uh, do you know Pastor Otis Lockett? No. Oh yeah, I've seen him on TV. Yeah, that's we're we're up under him. Okay, okay. Uh, well, listen, my number's gonna come up at the end of the show. If you will write it down, or, or if I can get your number, and maybe we can get in contact with each other and sit down and and have this discussion. Yeah, I would love w- that. Would you I stay, would love that. Okay, will you stay on the line? Yeah, I sure uh, will. All right, stay on the line, and, and Brother Mark McMinnis is gonna get your name and phone number. Okay. Okay. All right. Thanks for your call. Uh-huh. All right, that was a good call. That was a good call. Now, friends, this is what we're saying about Calvinism. If once saved, always saved is true, it just opens the door. Now, Mr. Bowles is not the only one that teaches this. And I know you've heard these uh, before, but I won't play them. I won't play them again. They're not too awful long. But this is uh, Kenneth Johnson, I think he is. And he's going to say the same thing, debate with Johnny. The question with me tonight is, I'm saved. I've been baptized, and I'm going to say that faith and baptism produces salvation. Then I can go on to say, well, now I'm doing the good works, and I'm keeping myself holy and set apart. And then right before I die in a car accident, a lustful thought comes into my mind. I have no time to repent. I have no time to do anything. Am I going to heaven or hell on that one? Well, according to your, to your position, you don't have to worry about any of that. No, either. I'm, I'm saying if I agree with saying. if you're with theology. Faith plus baptism saves, even though I don't believe in that, but I'm just saying if I did. Faith plus good works keeps me saved. Right before I die, I'm on my way to work. I've been living a holy life ever since, you know, I got up this morning, lived a holy life on my way to work. A lustful thought, I passed a woman on the road, a lustful thought comes into my heart. Before I can look back at the road, I done hit a car and I'm dead. 
Am I going to heaven or hell? Well, I'll tell you what, I'll answer yours if you'll answer me. What if you went ahead and committed fornication with that lady, and as you walked out, a car hit you, and you didn't have a chance to repent? Would you go to heaven or hell? By your theology, I'd go to hell. Well, by Jesus' theology, the Bible says no fornicator is going to be in heaven, so you can take that or leave it. And I'll say that you were going to hell both places. Okay, as a fornicator, that means I actually do the act. That's right. I asked you, if you went ahead and committed fornication and you got hit by a car as you came out the door of the woman's house, would you go to heaven or hell? By my stance on God's grace, yeah. I'd be going to heaven. All right, that's what I thought. But, I'm glad you said that. Let's listen to this. All right, now, he's going to heaven. Well, Darrell Bowles says it, fornicate, go to heaven. Kenneth Johnson says it, fornicate, go to heaven. Uh, Jerry Carter Jerry Carter says, I don't know if a saved man would do that. God, and he gives a whole list of things there that, that can't separate us from the things of God. Okay, so and, and along those lines, let me ask you this then. <clears throat> so you're saying a child of God, a child of God uh, is, is saved. They're, they're not going to be lost, never going to be lost, never fall. Uh, what no, if, I didn't say they weren't going to fall. Okay, they're they're not going to be lost. Not, they're not going to be in, in, condemned to hell. Right. Okay. So if, if someone who is saved then goes and commits fornication and dies in the very act, are they going to be in heaven? Well, would a saved man do that? Well, I believe so. I don't know if a saved man honestly would do that. I mean, you know, would a saved well, man go out here and commit adultery? Would a saved well, man go out here and commit adultery? Would a saved well, man go out here and commit adultery? God. Well, David was a man after God's own heart. He committed fornication. He committed adultery. So I guess he would. You know? Now, here's, here's Brian Edwards. I believe if you are in Christ, there is no way you will ever die and go to hell. Oh. I believe if you are in Christ, there is no way you will ever die and go to hell. Oh. I believe if you are in Christ, there is no way you will ever die and go to hell. Oh. Okay, if you're, in, if you're in Christ, no way you'll ever die and go to hell. Save man, I don't know if a saved man would do that. Well, even if a saved man did it, uh, Kenneth and, and Mr. Bowles both said, well, even if a saved man did do it, he's all right. He's going to go to heaven. So, see what we're doing, friends? We're showing that this doctrine of once and all, it opens the floodgates. It opens the floodgates. That is Calvin's contribution to the culture of corruption. Now, let's make a little bit, let's make a little bit of, of uh, comparison here. The Muslims say that if you die and go to heaven, you get all the virgins you want, all these virgins. Well, the Baptists say you get all the virgins you want, then you can die and go to heaven. Now, which sounds better? Let me tell you, hey, the Baptists, uh, uh, Islamists, Muslims, you, you need to come up with a better doctrine because the Baptists got you beat. The Baptists say you can have all the fornicating and vir virgins you want right here on, on the earth and then die and you still get to go to heaven. See that? Muslims say, you know, you got to die and go to heaven before you get all the virgin. Baptists say, you get all the virgins you want and then die and go to heaven. Now, what's the difference? What's the difference? Just, just, when, you, just when you get to, uh, all the fornicating, that's the only difference. Now, what we're, what we're showing, friends, is the culture of corruption is one that doesn't have any restraints. And why, exer why exercise restraint? If once saved, always saved. You know, once saved, always saved. You're just as good. Now, here's what here's what uh, uh, Mr. Bowles asked me, and I'm running up on time, so let me say that right real quick. He said, "Well, you know, once God puts you in Jesus' hand, can you can you lose your salvation?" Jesus said in John 10:28, 29, "I give unto them eternal life, and they shall never perish; neither shall any man pluck them out of my hand." My Father, which gave me them, is greater than all, and no man is able to pluck them out of my hand, out of my Father's hand. Okay? No man can pluck them out of the Father's hand. That means you can't make me lose my salvation. You can't pluck me out. Mark can't pluck me out. But look at this. Peter says in 2 Peter 1 verse 9, he says, He that lacketh these things is blind and cannot see afar off and hath forgotten that he was purged from his old sins. Let me get the next verse up there. 2 Peter 1 and verse 10, wherefore the rather brethren giving diligence to make your calling and election sure for if ye do these things ye shall never fall for so an entrance shall be abundantly, shall be ministered to you abundantly into the kingdom 
everlasting kingdom of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Now, Paul said there's some things that will keep you from entering into the kingdom of God. The Baptists say nothing can keep you. I'll take Paul. I'll take Peter. Above once saved, always saved. Above Calvin. Now, the problem we're dealing with, friends, is simply uh, showing that why would anybody want to believe the Bible or want to be restrained by the Bible when, when their preachers tell them to do what they want to do? You want another comparison? Here's the atheist. The atheist says, no worries when you die. The atheist says, when you die, you're just like a, you know, just a mind of mush. And what I believe is that when I die and my brain rots into a stinking mass and has maggots in it, there is no way that that me with all those memories that I took in, all that information I took in and thought about is going to continue to exist. I will be gone. I will feel just like I did before I was ever born. In other words, I won't feel at all. I'll cease to exist. All right. So he's going to cease to exist. He's a maggot-infested mound of mush. Well, he don't have any worries. He doesn't have any worries about when he dies, and neither does the Baptist, because the Baptist says, hey, once saved, always saved. I can go out fornicate and murder, intentionally fornicate and intentionally murder, according to Mr. Bowles, and hey, once saved, always saved. I'll die, I'll die. Saved man. Please. Please. And you wonder why we have all the corruption, we have all the embezzling, we have all the cronyism, people, you know, you scratch my back and I'll scratch your, you know, you, you, you that wonder why we have all this trouble going on? All these preachers over here uh, milking all their their uh, congregations from the tithes and driving the big cars and living up the lush, lavish lifestyle? Hey, do what you want to do. When you leave this world, there's gonna be there's not gonna be any uh, any consequence. So why should I worry about it? Why should I worry about it? Friends, if you stay online, I'll take your calls off the air, but we're up against the clock. The news is up next. Remember, thank you, friends, I hope this has helped. I hope this has opened your eyes. We had some good calls. I appreciate you calling in. And uh, till next time, remember to ask, what does the Bible say? You'll always get a word from the Lord, and then you can do your own religious review. Thanks for watching. Have a good night. Afternoon for the Reedsville Police Department. That's because they responded to an armed robbery at the BB&T branch located on Main Street. Star News on Matt Smith uh, responded to the scene along with Scotty Woods, our producer. They both took the camera out there to figure out what was going on. Matt, you were there on the scene. What did you What did you find when you got there? Well, we found uh, lots of blue lights flashing and uh, the uh, driveway to the bank uh, completely shut down. Mark. Uh, they uh, had uh, investigators uh, out uh, interviewing people as well as dusting the uh, doors of the bank for fingerprints as we as we got there. Uh, police Captain uh, Ken Hanks is, is, was in charge of the scene. Uh, he wasn't able to give us any information at that time, although we are, are trying to get back up with him to see what information that they can let us know. Uh, we know at least one individual was involved that uh, robbed the BBMC. Now, this is the one on South Main Street, uh, right across the street from Annie Penn Hospital. There we see uh, Captain Hanks uh, there in that car along with other officers. There's uh, Lieutenant Doyle O'Brien of the Reedsville Police Department there. Apparently the bank cordoned off at this point and that's so those officers can get to work and uh, get on that scene there. Uh, Matt, uh, do we know, was the bank robbed? Was someone robbed there at the bank? Uh, has anything come out of this uh, as of this, uh, this hour? Mark, at this point, uh no firm details have been released. Uh, uh, we're waiting on some uh, commentary from uh, Captain Hanks. 